please go ahead. Thank you, Paula, and thank you, everybody, for joining us today on the NXT TakeOver Toronto Conference Call. As a reminder, TakeOver will stream live from the Scotiabank Arena this Saturday at 7 p.m. on WWE Network. And at this time, I'd like to turn it over to WWE Executive Vice President of Talent, Live Events, and Creative, Paul Levesque. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. As always, I really appreciate everybody um, supporting and participating and um, and being a part of this and their interest in NXT as a whole. Um, as as usual, going into NXT TakeOver Toronto, stacked card that I'm very excited about. Um, you know, NXT's um, roster right now is as thick and as deep as it's probably ever been. Um, you look at this card and you can see it, but when you look at the shows over the last... A uh, few weeks, and you look at the the depth of what is there uh, with all the new faces and the the people that were in the breakout tournament and um, the the talent that we have at the PC uh, just getting ready to make their debuts now. Um, it's a very exciting time with the amount of talent we have, and I can't wait to get all of them rolling. There's some of them that have been waiting a while, chomping at the bit, and and that uh, to me always makes me excited because that competitive landscape of talent uh, chomping at the bit to show the world who they are makes everybody step up to an even higher level. So um, this card is is stacked. As usual, Street Profits against Undisputed Era, Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish um, should be spectacular. We've got a triple threat match for the North American Championship, Velveteen Dream, Pete Dunn, Roderick Strong, in in I think for for what many will consider sort of a dream match scenario, um, you've got the NXT Women's Championship match, Mia Yim, Shayna Baszler. You've got another women's match, which is very much uh, kind of a personal issue between Candice LeRae and Io Shirai, and of course the NXT Championship match. Going back to sort of to where it started, two out of three falls, Johnny Gargano, Adam Cole for the NXT Championship uh, with stipulations of a street fight in one fall, a wrestling match in the other, and, and Regal will pick the third if it goes to a third fall. So almost sort of a three stages of hell kind of scenario if it takes place. So um, should be an incredible night. Very excited about it. And uh, Toronto, the Scotiabank Arena, is a, a spectacular building and the fans of Toronto are some of the loudest anywhere. So this should be an unbelievable night. Um, but uh, I will open it up to calls now from all of you. And again, thank you for the time. Thank you. To ask a question, please press star one on your touch tone telephone. Also, if you are using a please make sure your mute button is turned off to allow your signal to reach our equipment. We ask that you please limit yourself to one question and one follow-up. Once again, it is star one at this time to ask a question. And first, we'll go to Brian Fritz with Sporting News. Hey, Paul, thanks for doing this again. Thank you, Brian. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, You just mentioned the stipulations for, for the main event between Gargano and Cole, and we know of two of them. What what was the process like in getting to that point and saying this is what we want to do for these matches or for those first two falls and and whatever's going to go into the third fall was that a difficult process to kind of figure that out and decide what you wanted to do for that match? Yeah, I think you want to make it unique. Um, you know, there was a, a obviously a, a conversation. And I just even mentioned it. You know, three stages of hell and sort of branding that out. And we've done that occasionally in WWE. Um, but I, but just the way the story played out, I wanted to present it in a little bit of a different manner and sort of have a little bit of what is that third fall going to be? And, and if there is a third fall, what would it be? And have there be a little bit of um, kind of the unknown factor to it? I think Johnny Wrestling, um, you know, one of the falls being a wrestling match makes sense. Um, and the way it was presented. And then, you know, the street fight sort of makes sense. Uh, for, for, you know, the undisputed era of, of sort of the group warfare thing. So, you know, it, 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 a lot of creative thought goes into it and, and the hows and the whys and where you're trying to get to 
on the other side of it. So it all plays a factor in this. And the great thing with two talent like Cole and Gargano, um, it, it kind of sort of doesn't matter what you pick. You know, they're going to knock it out of the park. And um, I think it'll be spectacular. So, uh, you know, two of the best in the world. I'm, I'm, I'm this one, I, I can't wait to see it. And I have to ask you this question about yourself. So I mean, WWE named Paul Heyman and Eric Bischoff as executive directors for, for Raw and SmackDown. You've obviously been in an executive position with the company for a while. Were you under consideration for either of those positions? Were you interested in either of them? No, look, you know, you have to understand the, the way it's laid out. Um, you know, the, the, their, their scope of what they are doing are very specific to those shows. And while I'm still at those shows, there's many weeks that I – you know, uh, due to my schedule and other commitments, I can't be at every single show. I can't be at every single Raw or I can't be at every single SmackDown. Um, you know, my, the scope of the things that I do are, are way beyond that with with live events, with um, creative. And, and in my role, creative sort of encompasses a lot of different things. It's not the main roster creative. It's you know, shirts and billboards and where everything else goes in the world. It's it's all the creative stuff that, that is the, the things that you don't see, they just sort of appear. Um, and then, uh, you know, the, the, everything with talent. So as, as our uh, company continues to grow and the talent roster continues to grow and talent ve- development continues to grow and as we ex- expand through our global localization overseas and everything else and performance centers, uh, the, there's only so many hours in a day, even though uh, the WWE and Vince are working very hard on trying to create, a, I think, an eighth day in the week and some, some extra hours to add on to the 24 in a day so we can get a little bit more accomplished. But uh, there's only so many hours in a day. So, you know, the, I, I'm thrilled, and, and I already see the, the the positives and the changes. And, and it's, you know, as the Megilla increases and gets bigger and this this whole thing continues to grow, it's it's really a lot of it comes down to organizational and, and organizational processes. And to have somebody from a, a manner in those shows of spearheading the process is very, very helpful, very, very smart. And I'm thrilled that it's those guys. Um, and I think they're going to knock it out of the park. I, I, you know, I'm excited to work with both of them. Heyman, I've been working with for a while. Uh, Bishops, it's been, it's been a while, but th- this is the first time I've kind of worked with him in this manner. Um, and so far it's, it's an exciting process. So I'm, I'm, I'm really happy and I already see, you know, positives from it. So it's great. Thanks, Paul. Always good to talk to you. Thank you, Brian. <clears throat> and next we'll go to Alex McCarthy with Talk Sport. Hi, Paul. Hey, How are you doing today? Thank you very much for taking the time. Um, I just Thank you. You said it yourself it's in the in the intro. The card is stacked. It always is for takeover, uh, and you have a deep roster as it is. So the likes of Kushida and Bianca Belair, and Matt Riddle, you know, people like that who can't even make it to the card. How difficult is it to have those conversations with them? You know, they must be knocking at your door, chomping at the bit. No, it, it, look, it's great um, in in a manner that. Yeah, everybody is chomping at the bit to get on everything, and everybody can't be on everything. But it makes you work really hard, even harder, to continue to have the spot and keep the spot. Right? You wanna, you wanna be on everything. But but I also think part of the, a little bit of the magic of it is the not overexposure. So you have the ability to to morph things, to have somebody be a major part of of this and then move into a slightly different role, have a major part of the TV shows, not necessarily have a spot in the takeover, but be a major part in the, in the, in the, the network shows. Um, you know, I, I think all of those things keep things fresh and keep things moving in the right direction, but it also keeps people hungry to keep doing more. You never want to have to go to somebody and tell them they, they, you know, Hey, you're not on this one or, um, and they always come to you ideas with how they can get on it. But at the same point in time, um, that's a part of the, I think, the the beauty of what makes it work. Um, you know, and, and then even then, you know, it's hard to tell somebody when they go to TV and they're looking at the show and they're like, man, why am I, why am I not on this show? Why am I not, 
factored into NXT right now. Uh, when it and it's you know you're trying to tell them like, give, give me a moment here because I'm going to factor you in a big way here going down the line and this and when you know that's part of having as stacked of a roster as we do and you just mentioned like the people that you mentioned even Kushida Bianca Belair um, you know th- those are the people that are in the show w- week after week and those are the people that are factored in big. And then when you look past that, you've got just just in the last few weeks, you've seen Angel Garza, Bronson Reed, Cameron Grimes, you know, guys like Damian Priest coming up, Dijakovic coming back, uh, Isaiah Scott, right? Like Pete Dunn just coming back in. Like it's, man, it is thick. That's the guys. You got Dakota Kai coming back, T. Knox, <clears throat> Chelsea Green, Deanna Perrazzo, like the amount of people that are jumping at the bit to show the world everything they have is massive. That, that is very exciting to me. And that is like the thing where you go, man, over the next, <clears throat> as exciting as everything is at all times, I feel like for NXT and I say that a lot, but I always feel like what's around the corner is even bigger. And I can honestly say right now, what's around the corner is even bigger. Yeah, I, I totally, I totally hear where you're coming from. Yeah, it's funny. Earlier this year, I suppose this is the other end of of that question. Um, Drew McIntyre came into our studios and he was telling me that he loves to bug you about going to NXT UK. Uh, we've seen yeah. uh, Fandango and Tyler Breeze and people like that turn up in NXT now. How often are you getting bugged by all these superstars to appear on these different brands? All, <laughs> all the time. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, look, and, and what's what's nice about it is they see the competitive landscape out there. A guy like Drew McIntyre is like, you know, hey, if I can do anything over there, man, I would love it. Like, it's a playground, right? And you see talent over there. When you look at the UK um, and you see guys like Walter and uh, Tyler Bate and Trent and just, you know, just everybody that's over there. If you're Drew McIntyre, you're like, I want to get in on that. You know, like that, that man, that seems cool as well. And, and same for the women, Tony Storm and Rhea and, and just everybody that's, that's making things happen. So, so talent are constantly coming to me, Kelly and Dane being back a part of NXT. Um, Cesaro is always talking to me about the UK or different stuff, you know, there's, and, and guys are always making offers. And, and when we do these takeovers, like tell you Saturday night, you know, a lot of the main roster, uh, of, of Raw and SmackDown will be sitting backstage watching it. And the ones that aren't, I'll be getting texts uh, from them all throughout the show. And, and it's funny, even when we have, uh, when they have live events, sometimes I, I get pictures from guys all the time. They're all sitting in the locker room with a, you know, a, an iPad set up watching takeover. And um, it, it's, it's, it's great. The support is great. They're all, you know, on the same team, but yet the competitive ability of it just, just raises, the bar for everyone, you know, and, and I think that's uh, a lot of fun. So it's, it's great to have people want to be a part of things, you know. Well, thank you, Paul. We'll look forward to Saturday and I'll see you in Cardiff. Yeah. Yeah. That, you know, that's something also to, we talk about this takeover, but you talk about Cardiff um, and an exciting show in a brand that right now to me is the NXT UK brand um, is on fire and, and uh, that Cardiff show is going to be white hot. I can't wait to get there. That's one of my favorite buildings, too. And next we'll go to Konstantinos Lianos with Daily Express. Hi, Paul. Always great to talk to you. You, you spoke about the, uh, the stacked card ahead of the big show. Which match do you think will steal the show at TakeOver, in your opinion? You know, uh, people ask it uh, on, on these calls a lot about the what what am I looking forward to the most or what I think is going to steal the show? It, it's so hard to predict. Like when you have a personal story like a Candice and EO um, and talent like that, like that, that can absolutely steal it. Um, Street Profits, Kyle and Bobby, like Ky- Kyle and Bobby are two uh, talent that it's tough to name a takeover that they were on that you didn't, make an argument for them maybe having match of the night. Uh, 
Dream, Pete Dunn, Roderick Strong, I can make the same argument about all three of those guys. And when you put that level of talent and character and everything else into a match together, like it's, it, yeah, I mean, it's, you could make an argument for any one of these um, to just steal the show. So to me, the, the beautiful part about these takeovers is just watching it go down and kind of, Every time you get done a match that you think like, no way anybody's topping that one, somebody comes out next and does it. Um, and it's it's not just about uh, two talent, just say, hey, this talent versus that talent. It's about the story that's going into it. Um, and to me, that's that's what this is all about. There's 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 deep stuff on every single one of these um, that are the story. There's character building in each and every one of these. And as NXT continues to grow as a brand. You see us experimenting with different things and evolving and getting out there um, with, you know, uh, things like a prime target that we just put out this week, which is a deeper dive into the Cole Gargano storyline and, and seeing more into the lives of, of what's going on and, and getting into that story. Uh, those engage you more with the characters and, and make you feel for them, for their personalities, for who they are, for the human interest story of what they're doing, not just, within the storylines, but as, as people, as, as performers, as athletes, and, um, it just engages you further. So, you know, I, I think, uh, um, it's, it's the combination of the two that really makes this magic, but any of this has the, because the stories are there for everything, it, all of it has the ability to steal the show that night. Nobody, nobody is set up in a bad way. I see. And NXT Women's Champion Shayna Baszler recently claimed there's still demand for a dream match that has a lot of NXT factor in it, the WWE Four Horsewomen versus the MMA Four Horsewomen dream match. How likely are we to see that dream match one day in the near future, would you say? I don't think it's uh, outside of, of being a reality. I mean, everybody's sort of kind of doing their own thing in the moment, right? You know, Bailey's a champion, Becky's a champion. Um, but at any time that grouping can, 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 be, can get back on the same page. You've got, uh, Rhonda out taking a personal break right now, but she's, she's been very clear about her passion for WWE and her desire that she still has more to prove. Um, and I think when you take a talent like Shayna that came in, sort of just getting started in her uh, WWE journey when you first saw her in the Mae Young Classic to see where she's come in a short period of time and how good she is and dominant she is um, and how quickly that both Marina and Jessamine have stepped up and become uh, pretty decent performers in their own right. Like, yeah, I would like to see that. And, and I think when the time is right, uh, you never say never. Uh, so to me, when the time is right, I would love to see it. Great. Thank you very much, Paul. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. And next we'll go to Jason Powell with ProWrestling.net. Hey, good morning, Paul. How are you? Hey, Jason. Uh, to follow up on what Brian Fritz asked, are you definitively the heir apparent for the Raw and SmackDown creative leadership role, as we all assume, and if so, is there a plan in place for who would take over your position with NXT? Yeah, I mean, look, um, there are in, in any company of this size and, and um, with everything that we do, you have to have succession plans and you have to have um, next level of, of where you want to go. You know, I think sometimes people get caught up in just the product that gets put out there. So they, Oh, it's just raw. It's just SmackDown. It's, it's the heir apparent to this or that or whatever. There is no heir apparent. First of all, um, anybody that thinks that Vince is stepping away or, uh, he'll probably outlive all of us, uh, knowing that his, his mom's in her late nineties and still running around, uh, <laughs> very active. Uh, he's got the gene. So he's, um, They'll probably outlive all of us, but you know, it's, it's, um, there, there's succession plans to everything. Those succession plans change on a regular because this company changes on a regular Look back five years. It's a totally different place. And it was five years ago, even. So, um, 
I think there's a lot of factors involved in all of that. Who goes where, how, what happens. But yeah, as, as you're looking at um, who takes what and final answers of this and that, it's a constantly evolving thing. But all of us, Vince, myself, Steph, everybody in this company is constantly look at, well, if things shift, who takes whose place and who does what? Um, and, and you know, that, that is no different for me and NXT and that whole process. So you're constantly looking for, for people that can step up and take things off your plate so you can advance to something different as well. Okay. And, and any update on the status of the May Young Classic for 2019? We're, we're in the process of, uh, working on some things now and finalizing uh, some stuff. And hopefully we'll have some announcements uh, soon on all of that. Um, you know, it, it's a the, the bandwidth of sometimes things happening. When you talk about the just around the corner, as we are coming into the middle of August, just around the corner, you're talking about massive shifts to Fox and massive shifts with raw with USA and like all of that and trying to ramp up for all of it and, and how that all works. It, 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 you know, you've heard it said, I've said it here before that when one piece shifts, it's like dominoes, right? It, it moves everything. And that, that in our business, it's absolutely that way. So when, when we shift to Fox, it changes everything about SmackDown as a brand and where it goes and how it routes and, everything it 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 shifts raw a little bit it it moves all the pieces so there's a lot of prep that happens to that so a, a little bit of some stuff got pushed to a little bit later in the year this year in the planning stages just because of bandwidth of trying to get it all done all in the right period of time and even if you just look at this month of you know takeover and SummerSlam all the TV stuff coming out of that at the end of the month, you're, you know, you have, we have the Cardiff show uh, for NXT takeover UK. Then you're, you're back into more live for, um, you know, an, another uh, domestic uh, Ross Smackdown pay-per-view. You know, th there's a lot of things happening all at once. And then right after that, you're shifting into the, the um, Fox and, and USA shifts, which, are epic events in and of themselves. You know, there's so much planning that's going around it. So some of it just got delayed until a little bit later in the year, but there'll be some announcements around May Young Classic and everything uh, coming up soon. All right. Good luck with the show. Thank you so much. And next from PW Insider, we'll go to Mike Johnson. Hey, Paul, how are you? Mike, you, you've fallen down the line here. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Apparently, I, I got to get on the calls on like Tuesday or something. Um, <laughs> I, I, I wanted to ask about Johnny Gargano. Um, obviously, he's main eventing this weekend, but he hasn't been working as many live events as he had been. And let's face it, he's a workhorse in the ring. There's been a lot of speculation, and we've gotten a lot of questions about whether he's got some lingering injuries or whether there's something up there. So I wanted to ask if uh, maybe he'd been pulled uh, as a uh, premeditated decision to make sure he's healthy for takeover uh where does he stand and 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 in terms of medical status uh, he's he's fine um you know w without me getting into medical details of people because i can't um it, 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 there was a little lingering thing that if it absolutely it's, it's one of those funny things that in the athletic world you go like this is sort of nothing right and even for him it's like having to pull the reins on a horse because he's got like a stone in his hoof. But like, if you don't and go stop him and pick the, 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 the rock out, like it becomes a big issue. Right. So this is just one of those little things that I was like, look, let's just take you off of some stuff, even though you're fine, because I don't want this to become something more than it is. And, and, uh, it's cleared up and he's totally fine. So it, it's, uh, it's just one of those little things that uh, you don't want to take the, the risk of becoming something more than it is. Um, not because it's a serious thing that could be career uh, threatening or anything like that, but just because then if you do, you know, get to the point now, you do have to take a significant period of time off to get this thing to shut down totally just to, to be able to, to have it heal a hundred percent. So it's more, it was more, uh, 
you know, precautionary than it was anything else. But um, I would rather take that that uh, that precaution now than than have it become something more down the line. All right, and then I just wanted to ask about the Evolve 10th anniversary show and what the feedback internally was to that. Were you happy with that experiment? And uh, how often would you like to open the doors to see Evolve, Progress, et cetera? Some of these affiliated companies have material broadcast live on the network. And um, how, how, does this, how, do, how do events like that change planning for TakeOver? Uh, well, it, well, just to answer the last question, first, it doesn't change planning for TakeOver. Obviously, these things are planned well in advance and a long time coming. You know, the 10th anniversary show was built for a long period of time. Um, The plan to put it on the network was built for a long period of time and the experimentation with it as, as we've moved into, as you see the new sort of rollout of the um, kind of the, 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 some of the network stuff and plans for the network going down the line evolve shows uh, different shows, a lot of brands that we have alliances with and everything else will factor into the network in a big way. Um, the, the Evolve show was spectacular. I thought it was great. You know, um, a, a, obviously a huge deal for a bunch of young talent that are trying to make a name for themselves and step up to that next level. And, and it's really um, sort of a proving ground of like, you know, hey, if you, if you want to be a WWE superstar, if you want to make it in the business, um, Evolve is a place that you should be trying to get to, uh, you know, much like uh, Progress in the UK, ICW, WXW. Those are places that are cultivating talent, helping to teach talent to get to that next level, and that we're excited to work with and, and help um, bring the next generation of talent uh, forward in the business and give them that platform and you know the wwe network gives us that opportunity to expose them in a way like they never have before um around the world so it was um it was an experiment we've been building for a long time and it was a grand slam and i think you're going to see a lot more of that i think uh gabe and sal have a lot to be proud of in the brand that they've built there and um I'm excited that, you know, they've, they've kind of put something together there that really can showcase these young guys at a, at a level, young guys and girls at a, at a level where they're really, you know, trying to break into the business and really make a name for themselves and get rolling and then, you know, progress to NXT and to the WWE and, and, and everything else that goes along with it. So um, those are exciting next steps in this whole progression to me and as you see this move around the world in different markets you're going to see a lot more of that as time comes um you know the wwe network uh will be kind of the the one-stop shop for uh everything that you could ever need or want i think in in the in the industry all right thank you for the time thank you and next, we'll go to Dave Meltzer with Wrestling Observer. How you doing, Paul? Hey, Dave. So you've been talking uh, cryptically about how things are about to change. And uh, obviously, there's been a lot of talk about um, television changing with NXT come the fall <laughs> or later. I don't know the date. But um, would, are you, in theory, is, is there a chance of two NXT television shows a week? Or are you looking at one? Or... Um, can you even talk about what may be happening? Well, I, you know, with, with, at the risk of sounding cryptic, um, <laughs> you know, it, it, so th- there's always planning. Um, you know, it's funny when you say two NXT television shows, it's funny in my mind, I immediately whether there are two NXT television shows, NXT UK, NXT, but, uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, the, the, there's always a changing landscape. There's always, a um, where we the internal discussion here of where content goes is a constant right we look at this kind of wheel of options of distribution that we have across all platforms whether that be uh television or or platforms like that like a you know being a part of of that world uh, and whether that be a you know a um 
a Facebook or something like that, or or USA or Fox. Um, then there's, you know, our digital uh, presence, which, you know, as you, as you know, right, like a billion social media followers, uh, number one channel on YouTube for sports, uh, I think number two, I think overall uh, right now in the world for anything on YouTube. Um, so d- digital and where you put things out in that manner. And then our, our VOD, our, our network, our um, direct to consumer. So there, there, there's this big wheel where you put content at all times um, is a constant up for debate, how much content, what content, um, and we're constantly working on it. Um, and there's plans, you know, over the short run and there's plans in the long run. Um, but there, it's constantly being evaluated. So when it comes to NXT, the reason I talk cryptically about it is because there's a lot of exciting thoughts and ideas out there. Um, but we're constantly debating in an ebb and flow sort of, of, of where things go and land. And I think, um, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of thought that goes into all of it because it, they all affect each other and you want to put the right amount of stuff on each one of those pieces of the wheel to make sure that you're uh, getting the maximum out of all of them. Um, so when it comes to NXT, uh, growing as a brand and everything else, there's a lot of options on the table. Um, you know, and, and look, I'll just say this contrary to what I've, I've heard because I, you know, I hear you hear people speculate and I've seen the, the conversations around FS1 or whatever that is with NXT and all that stuff. And then immediately people come in with counter programming talk, you know, um, we, we have content all over the place. And if people want to talk about counter programming, um, and, and bring that up in the conversation, like Wednesday has been the home of NXT forever, right? Well, that, that's where it's sat. It's been on our network on a Wednesday's time slot now forever. And when people announce, when other people announce uh, Wednesday, you don't hear talk about counter programming. You just hear the announcement for us. Everything is counter programming and it's this and it's that it's, there's, you know, we plan things long in advance. We worry about doing our business and that's really what we worry about. So, you know, um, it, the, the cryptic talk is because there's a lot of thoughts and, and, uh, possibilities. And that's the great part about it is we can do just about anything. Um, it's what is best for the WWE and our business and how does it affect, um, the fans in, in the way that is the most meaningful for them. And kind of a follow up on that. I guess I was thinking about this for my own schedule come fall and um, with adding any new programming and especially if it's NXT and you're hands on on NXT and then you talk to me you of your other jobs with talent relations and all the time that that, you know, takes in. I mean, would you be, you know, you kind of mentioned you're not at every Raw and Smackdown and now Raw and Smackdown aren't Monday, Tuesday. It's two different trips a week. And if you're doing something on another day, it's three different trips a week. I mean, how are you, how are you going to survive? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Come, come the future. I mean, I obviously, yeah, have you know, to, there's, but... there's no, yeah, you, you do the best you can. There's no, uh, I, I, I wish the, you know, of, of all the things like in, in uh, like the Star Trek stuff, you see the, the flip phones became like the, the communicator became the flip phone and then it became the smartphone. And I, I wish they would have figured out the, uh, the beam me up thing. That would have been nice. Like if we could just transport to these other places uh, in the flash, that would have been nice. Uh, but unfortunately, it doesn't exist. You do the best you can. You go where you need to go. We create the content we create, need to create um, and the opportunities we need to create. Um, but th- but those things all factor in to all of it. So when you're talking about, uh, hey, where does this show go? Where does that show go? Do we put a, a, you know, a, a Cardiff show here for – uh, for the NXT UK brand, do we put uh, this takeover here? Where do these things all sit? There's all factors in that. We all got to make these things work. And then there's the human limits of, of what you can do on them. So that they're, those factors all play in as well. But you're trying to also expand out the team. You know, when, when we first started, and I'll just give you an example. When we first started NXT UK, I was at every TV. 
you know, and it's flying over to London and the setup of it and the PC and building the London PC and all of the setup of all of that. I was constantly going to back and forth to London and, and getting this done and then constantly going back and forth to England to do the TVs and doing all the stuff. But the, the intent of doing that was to build out a team, to build out a team over there, to build out a team of other people. And now I haven't been to one of those TV tapings in, um, in a significant period of time. Um, I will go to the live show in Cardiff and be a, be there for that and, and um, you know, be very hands-on with that and, and all of it because there's a different factor of the live and everything else. But, you know, you, you're, the, the intent is to build these teams as we move around the globe to build these teams, get them up to speed and hand things off to them to where they're managing it, operating it, and running it in a way that is, um, you know, the best possible. Um, and that that is no different for for any of, of this. So that, that goes from Raw to SmackDown to everything else. You know, there's, uh, there's weeks every now and then where Vince isn't at a Raw or a SmackDown. And, and it's funny because sometimes it happens and like you, I, this huge to do, oh my God, Vince wasn't even at TV this week. You're like, yeah, no, he, <laughs> he's got a lot of commitments going on. Um, but, but you button it up and you put faith in the team and you run the shows and, and you, and you move forward with them. Um, it's it's running a business, so we we, we will uh, we will create the content we can create. Um, we will do it in the best way possible, and we will put teams together to make these things happen in the in the best way possible, and uh, and and uh, try to do what is best for our fans all around the globe. Cool, thanks, and good luck on Thank the show. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. And next, we'll hear from Victoria Tedesco with WrestleView.com. Hey, Paul, how are you? Hey, Victoria, how are you? I'm good, doing well. It's so great to talk to you again. Yeah, great to talk to you. So the NXT shows have developed such an incredible reputation. You talked about the international successes and all these other brands that are going along and how everything kind of interconnects. How do you ease the mind of the performers who feel the nerves knowing more eyes are on them due to this show's continuous success? You don't. Uh, if you don't have nerves, if you don't have butterflies, if you don't have that uh, that feeling in the pit of your stomach um, that would make some people panic and, and freeze, um, then you don't care. You know, I, I want them to feel that. I want them to embrace that. I want them to look for that. And I want them to use that to give you the performance that they can. That's, that, that can do one of two things. That feeling, those nerves, all of that um, can either paralyze you or inspire you to do great things. And I want them to use it to inspire them to do great things, things that they never thought they'd be able to do. Um, and, you know, have faith in themselves and in what they've learned, right? That's, it's a part of doing what they do. There are times at the performance center or in anything in this business where, you know, you're doing the same things over and over and, and you think to yourself, oh, you know, like, am I, am I doing this? It's driving me nuts. I've been doing this every day. And, you know, it feels like you've just been doing the same thing over and over and over again. And then you realize that when you get in that moment, it becomes instinctual that the movements, the moments when a crowd reacts, you do the thing that needs to be done. When this happens, you're there. It, it becomes instinctual. And, and when you get out there, you might be nervous. You might have those butterflies. You might have all that. But when you get out there and you're trained and you're ready, you relax, right? So it's the training. It's, there's nothing that I'm going to tell them um, beforehand that is going to get them ready if they are not already ready, right? They have, they, you have to be prepared. You have to do all the work ahead of time. The panic sets in when you're not prepared and you haven't done the work. And then there's nothing that you can do in that moment to get ready. You're either ready or you're not. And they are all ready. The talent that are on this card, I can look at it from top to bottom. The performers that are going to be there that night, Every single one of them is ready. It's why they're in that spot. And I know that they're going to knock it out of the park. They need to have that nervousness and that excitement, but 
have the faith in themselves and the trust in themselves to know that they are about to do great things because they have trained for it and they are ready. So, and I agree with you. I think that you honestly have prepared them very well for every single show. So on that note, and to follow up, you mentioned before about Fox Sports and, you know, the USA Network and all these different changes that are coming up. So if NXT is consistently on Fox or if at all, how you talked about the administration side of it, like how you are all preparing on your end, but how do you prepare the talent for that? Or is it similar to what you mentioned before about if you're ready, you're ready? But with consistent TV. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a, a little bit of it is if you're ready, you're ready. And, and that goes for it, – it, it, it honestly sort of doesn't matter. You know, it's a funny thing that people say, like, well, this show's live, that show's not live. It, yeah, but if 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 you're counting on the show not being live, it's – it's. Uh, I always think of it to myself like the high wire uh, guy where they say, you know, like if you're walking on a high wire, if, they, if you have a net, you're going to fall. Because right. <laughs> because you know because you know the net is there and you can rely on it. If there's no net, you're not going to fall because you can't. Um, and I, I think that's really the only difference with live TV. Sometimes um, it used to drive me nuts back when I was a performer that when SmackDown was a taped show, it used to drive me crazy that I would get there and I would feel like the energy was different from the talent and that they weren't as jazzed up for the show and they would kind of go out there and be like yeah but if we screw it up we'll just do it again and they'll they'll be all edit it out or whatever and like i would be like guys there's you know ten thousand people here or whatever there's no second chance on this thing and don't you know it's it's all live so um i think we've trained these talent that no matter what the opportunity is and i think you've you see that at these takeovers. These takeovers are live. The the you know the NXT shows are are, are taped right now. But um, when when you see them perform at either level, it's the same, right? So there's we have them prepared, whether it's live, whether it's taped, whether uh, there's a lot of people or a few people, right? It's the same, and the training is there. So the confidence and the ability to do what they do. At all times, that's what that's what the performance center is there for. That's what their training is there for. That's why they have coaches like Sarah Motto and Shawn Michaels and Matt Bloom and all these people that are there teaching them what they've learned over 25 year careers or whatever that is, um, handing it down. It's it's all about being prepared. Paul, thank you so much for talking to WrestleView and good luck on Saturday. I'm really looking forward to the show. Thank you, Victoria. Hope I see you there. Paul, and next time from Wrestling Inc., we'll go to Raj Jiri. Uh, hi, Paul. Uh, first off, hey, Raj. Uh, hi. How's it going? Uh, I'm good, man. How are you? Good. Uh, first off, happy belated 50th birthday. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Uh, I wanted to ask you about Simone uh, Simone Johnson training at the WWE Performance Center recently, and uh, have you had a chance to watch her train at all? And what's it like seeing the daughter of when you're on one of your greatest in-ring rivals uh, training to possibly enter the business. Yeah, look, all I'll say about Simone is um, because, uh, you know, it's uh, obviously um, Brock's daughter. And, and if if you get the opportunity to, to ask him about his daughter, you can ask him. But I, I will just say this, that uh, Simone shares her father, her mom's, her grandmother and her entire family's passion um, for what we do. Um, incredibly so. And she also shares her uh, family's incredible work ethic, um, much like they do. You know, you hear her dad talk a lot of times about be you know, be the hardest worker in the room and all that. She shares that same uh, work ethic. That nut didn't fall too far from the tree, let me tell you. So, um, it's, uh, it's awesome to see, you know, um, it's awesome to see, uh, somebody's that, that next generation comes in. You, it's a funny, you mentioned my birthday and that in the same, uh, in the same, uh, line of questioning where, you know, it makes me realize how old I am that uh, the rock's daughter is now training with us. So, um, very cool. And, uh, and she's an extremely hard worker, and 
if uh, if she wants this, much like her dad, there is nothing that will stop her. Great, thanks. And kind of uh, related to that, Sami Zayn had noted a few weeks ago that The Rock was at the WWE Performance Center. Uh, is there anything you can, uh, any details you could provide on that? Um, yeah, he was at the Performance Center. <laughs> You know, you just asked the question, his daughter's there. So, uh, you know, on, on, on a fairly regular basis, uh, you know, so, um, sometimes he comes in, see his daughter and, uh, just like any dad would, and he's very proud of her. And he came in there to, to obviously lend his advice. I'm sure if she's anything like my daughter, she's probably like, yeah, dad, whatever. What do you know? Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, yeah, he was he was uh, he was there as a proud papa, you know, and and the 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 wonderful thing about the performance center, um, I feel it every time I'm there. It's one of my favorite places to go in this business. It is like the fountain of youth, you know, and and uh, it's just the, the 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 buzz and the vibe and the excitement and the energy and the passion in that place is just infectious and you walk in there and it's just all these young, hungry, incredibly driven talent, um, just grinding away. And man, it's, it's hard not to be inspired when you're there. It's hard not to walk out of there just like invigorated. And, you know, I leave there wanting to go just like go to work for all these kids and just like, you know, do more and put together more shows and put together bigger events. And I just want to do more for them because they're grinding and passion and man, it's, it's just awesome to see it's, it is, it's like the fountain of youth. You just want to walk in there and uh, like, like a fountain and just splash the youth all over you and just, man, just, just soak it all up because it, it's inspiring. Um, and I think that anytime you see whether that's rock or Austin or Sean or, um, you know, lately you've seen uh, X-Pac and, Scott Hall and Tager's been there. Just you know, town are always you know walking through those doors, and any time they leave, they say the same thing, and they're asking about when they can come back because of that feeling. It's 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 inspiring. Great, thanks, Paul. Paula, we have time for one more question. Thank you, and that will come from Kelly Wells with PW Torch. Hey, uh, Kelly. Thanks for having us, Paul. How are you doing? So this Saturday, we're getting uh, two women's singles matches on TakeOver for the first time since August 2016. I think that's great. Uh, with four championships now being defended on most TakeOver shows, uh, has there been any con consideration um, to adding a sixth TakeOver match so both men and women can have a featured grudge match away from championships? Yeah, you know, look, look we always... Um... I never want to get into the formula, even though in some manner, um, you know, at, at a certain point in time there, you find something that works and then you sort of stick with it. And then, but the one thing you don't uh, want to make is a formula, right? So I don't want to say there's a formula. Every single show we do, as we're building the show and building out what the cards are going to be, we look at the content, we look at the ebb and flow of the stories and what's there. What makes the most sense? What are the biggest stories? And then what is the overall feel of that show? I never want to add something in just to say, hey, you know, hey, let's just add in another match right here and then the show will be longer and then this one doesn't really fit, but let's add it in because it makes more quality or whatever that is. Um, I want it to be the right thing for the overall, for the show, for the fans, for everybody. And um, it's, but it's a constant. It, we do the same, same sort of, uh, assessment process of the shows every single time we put one of these together. It's not just a, how many matches, you know, okay, so here's the matches and here's the slots they fill and, and doing it. So uh, we do all of it. I, I love the fact that um, the, the Candace EO story has, has, is hot and, and ready to go. I love the fact that uh, Shane and me is hot, ready to go. And I love the, that we can fit more in, when we do stuff like this, but and not at the detriment of the show. And, you know, hopefully over time, the opportunity will increase where we can do more things on a regular basis and have the opportunity to run and, and expose more talent in bigger ways and give them the opportunities to be a part of these as well without making the shows longer. If we have to 
do more or whatever that is, great. Um, without making them longer or, you know, harder to get through, uh, it, it's, it's got to be right all the way around. All uh, right. Yeah, that's great. Um, kind of in that vein uh, of the women, it certainly seems like a lot more thought has been given to uh, strengthening the women's side uh, of the roster, uh, seemingly deepening again, the emergence of Mia Yim, uh, the return of Dakota Kai, you got Deanna and Tegan. Is there any chance maybe in three months' time we could see, for instance, horse women in EO against their various enemies in a War Games match? Um, a- a- again, everything is possible. There's n- there's n- there's nothing that I um, would put out, you know, right now that I would say that. Oh my God, that'll never happen. Like if if the right thing um, is there and surfaces. I'd absolutely be willing to look at it and and do it and um, yeah, I'm I'm open to any of that. All right, thanks a lot, Paul. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so we're we're done. Yeah. So uh, thank you all for uh, for participating in this and and being here. Hopefully, I'll see a bunch of you in um, in Toronto. Uh, look forward to seeing you at the show and then look forward to talking to you afterwards and, and hopefully talking about how wonderful the event was again. And, um, you know, also look forward to speaking to you again before the UK Cardiff show. And um, hopefully some of you will make that trip as well and and be out there for that because I think that event is going to be much like uh, the other UK events and much like the takeover is just a spectacular event that uh, takes that UK brand to a whole nother level as well and uh, continues to, to build that as, as I've said, brick by brick and, um, and continue that journey. So uh, exciting time, lots of things right around the corner. Um, yes, Dave, you can take that cryptically and uh, I will talk to you all soon. Thank you very much.